Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be going over my hospital bag must-haves. I'm 36 weeks pregnant currently with baby number three and I am going to be doing a third c-section so my hospital bag needs are probably going to be just a little different um, than if you were having a vaginal birth a vaginal birth you usually stay in the hospital for 24 to 48 hours and with the c-section it's more like you can stay up to four days even if you needed to um i think with my first we used the entire four or five days that we could stay and with my second i left by day two because i was just i was able to move around a lot more and i just was like i'm going to be more comfortable at home so Anyways, just to throw that out there, but again, I think it will be helpful just to know, you know, what other moms are putting in their bags. I've also learned that less is more. There's not too much that you need to bring, but I think it's about the right stuff that you do bring. FYI, it has been five years since I've had my last baby, so I kind of had to relearn everything as far as what I was going to put inside my bag. Um, and when I say bag, I usually bring like two, so I'll bring like a little suitcase, like a carry-on suitcase, and then I'll have... A little bit of a duffel bag and then that's pretty much it and with COVID and everything going on right now too we were given clearance about a month ago that you know partners are allowed now in the operating room as well as when I stay overnight but now that they're saying there might be a resurgence in cases we'll see if that's gonna happen so I'm just preparing for both like either having him just for the surgery and then not having him for afterwards and it's just me and baby which means I'm gonna rely a lot on nurses especially when getting up and you know having the baby and stuff because for that first three or four days it's really hard especially after c-section just bending over getting up even just trying to go to the bathroom is really really difficult so with c-section a lot of times what happens is you're not allowed to eat for up to 24 hours after the surgery which means that your milk doesn't come in right away it it's delayed just a little bit than it would be if you had a vaginal birth with my first i think his like i wasn't able to feed him right away for that first night like he had to get a bottle which i was really upset about because i wanted him to start nursing but with that said, my breasts, once my milk started coming in, were so engorged. It was so uncomfortable. I had my incision, and what you realize is that when the baby's sitting on top of you, it's obviously weight that's on tender areas of your body. So one of the things that I didn't bring the first time, but I did bring the second time, was my breast friend pillow. And what that is, it's basically just like a boppy that goes around your waist though. So it gives you a little extra cushion. And so when I put the baby on me, there was no pressure anywhere else, which was really, really nice. This is what the pillow looks like. And you can see it comes with like a little belt right here and you just put it around your waist and then the baby just sits on it. And you can see there's little contours here. So it's just really comfortable. And then there's even like a little pouch here. So you can put like your phone or a water or whatever it is you need so you're not reaching for things. Speaking of reaching for things, we're gonna be on our phones a lot. We're gonna be taking a lot of pictures. You might have extra camera, whatever it is. Don't just bring your iPhone charger. Bring like the, you know, the cables that are that 10 foot plus. You want something like this because sometimes the plugs for the hospital rooms are way further than where your bed can be. And the last thing, again, you're gonna wanna do if you have a C-section is bending over and reaching and trying to grab things, especially if you are going to be solo in the room um, and relying a lot on just the nurses. And then also, if you are bringing in camera, I'm probably gonna bring a camera because I really do wanna vlog what a real C-section's like. So obviously your battery chargers for that. Now to stick also with this whole idea of when your milk comes in, which especially if this is the first time you're having a baby, it's just such a, for an experience because you're like oh my gosh my boobs were getting big when i was pregnant and now they're just ginormous and they're full of milk so um one of the biggest things that was helpful was some sort of nipple balm or cream because especially the first time your baby is latching onto you it can be so painful and i mean it's the best thing in the world because once the baby does latch you're like oh my god it's amazing and you know they're feeding and nursing there's two things I have here. This is the Honest Calm Your Nip Balm Soothing for you and safe for your babe. The, this has changed so much now um, because before, back in the day, I think I used like lanolin or stuff that necessarily wasn't something that I would use and then also nurse. I'd have to use it after I nursed. And then when I nursed again, I would like wipe it off. But this is something that you can put on. And it's almost just like a vitamin E or like an, a Vaseline ointment. It just looks like 
like an oil consistency and you put it on it feels really really nice and it just calms your nipples now the new thing that i have which i haven't tried yet and that's because i obviously haven't started nursing yet are these this is called silver red soothe and protect so this is actually um silver nursing cups very interesting i've heard amazing things about them this company sent them to me but basically they look like this and you put them over your nipples after you're done nursing and they're supposed to calm and soothe and then you just put your nursing bra over that so i will definitely report back on this but something that's going to calm your nipples down is definitely a must-have in my book with that said these lancelo nursing pads are also a huge must for me i'm not going to take this whole case with me but they come in almost pre-packaged sections like this you know you can take half of this or you can take this whole thing it doesn't hurt to bring extra but what i like about these they are basically like sanitary napkins for your chest but you just take them and you open them and then you they have little strips like band-aids and then they stick to your nursing bra or whatever you're going to be wearing at that time and what it does is is that when you start leaking it doesn't leak onto your actual um clothing which is really nice because that can be so uncomfortable because literally anything can trigger it like if the baby cries you're just like oh my gosh my milk's coming in and now i don't know what to do and um it can be really uncomfortable so having these were huge but you see it literally looks like a pad that's it they look like little flat discs and then you take this off and you stick it onto the bra or whatever you're wearing and so then you just have that on underneath and it just it works wonders, trust me. Next up are nursing bras. I am actually not a fan of nursing bras in general. I don't know why I never have been. They're very uncomfortable and especially after having surgery, it's the last thing I wanna do is feel really constricted. However, I have found these off Amazon and I love them. They come in a pack of two or three. I will link everything that I talk about below, but these are nursing almost like sports bras. So you can see, this is what they look like. And they have the little clips here for you to undo when you are nursing. Um, and then they have adjustable straps in the back. And then they also have like the bra situation. They can come in any color that you want them to. I got these in a size medium. They're more like sports bras. This is what I really, really like. The other thing that is really important in my book is, especially for C-sections, are going to be underwear that's conducive to your C-section. The last two, I relied on like really large, the granny panties like Hanes that go all the way up past your belly button. You do not want your underwear to hit your incision because at that time you're gonna be so tender. They have these mesh underwears at the hospital that they'll give you. They almost just look like you can roll them out and they're very, very thin. Um, you're gonna be wearing that with a lot of pads. And when I say pads, they're like the thick maxi pads. You can bring those um, from home too, like just get the heavy, heavy, ultra heavy um, maxi pads, but the hospital has them too. So it's really up to you if you wanna bring extra. Sometimes I'll just bring extra just to have, but usually the hospital has you covered there. In addition to having like a water spray bottle because you're gonna wanna clean yourself, you're gonna need to clean yourself because there's gonna be, a, it's an incision. And so you're gonna have to clean that out quite a bit every single time you go to the bathroom and um it's a little bit of a process but with that said i just want to go over a few underwears that i found super helpful so these are off amazon they are specifically for c-sections um but they are basically just high rise underwear and obviously you know full bottom they're not like not gonna be wearing thongs or anything like that and if you are then kudos to you but i just definitely couldn't do stuff like that they come in various colors and they're just great because again this is not going to sit at your incision. It's gonna go above that. And you really want that feeling of just being kind of held together. There is this other one called C Panty for After C Section. It says it slims the belly and protects incision. It supports weakened abdominal muscles. So this one is from Upspring, which I will link as well. It's a, definitely a little bit like thicker. So like to me, all I remember was wanting to live in those mesh underwear that the hospital gives you because it's very easy. It's almost like light as a feather to put on. These, like this feels almost more like Spanx, which scares me a little bit because I feel like I'd want to wear this maybe like a week post-surgery, not like right after. So the one cool thing is that it comes with a silicone 
band inside, which is supposed to be, you know, silicone's really great for helping heal incisions. So you can see that right there. There's a silicone based thing right there. And so when it's on, it's supposed to just make you feel like you have everything constricted. So these might be something great, like when you come home, but I was, you know, I think I'm gonna take these with me too because I just wanna see if it's something that I can wear immediately after surgery too. My sister-in-law told me this before I had gone in for my first, but I didn't know this, but a lot of times hospitals don't tell you that you can ask for like a little band, like waist trainer it looks like, but it's it's a lot lighter. It just keeps everything like nice and put together because after your surgery, you're still gonna feel like you're six months pregnant and everything's just gonna feel like it's kind of hanging out there. Ask for that, but in case they don't have that, like I don't recommend bringing the belly bandit, something that's stronger than that because I feel like it just hurts. For me, it was way too severe to have um, like a day one or day two. This one is something that I also found off of Amazon. Let's just try this on, shall we? So I'm obviously pregnant, so this is gonna work right now, but basically it just goes around your waist like this and then you hold everything in. I know it sounds weird, but it does feel really good when you're able to kind of keep everything together. The biggest thing that you wanna make sure again is that nothing is hitting your incision. At least for me, that was what I learned. So sometimes like the waist trainers, depending on what kind you get, like don't try and get ones that are, you know, lace up or anything crazy because those are going to hurt and hit at your incision, personally speaking. So I would just stick with something like this that's really nice and light and easy to work with. And unfortunately, a lot of this stuff, like you won't know until after you have the baby because right now, like my, my tummy's huge, huge belly. So I can't really like try and test any of this stuff out. And plus like stuff, especially with the nursing pads and nipple cream, like you won't know until you're actually nursing and you are having chafed nipples and all that stuff. Then the next thing that you want is around clothing and something really loose. I didn't even wanna wear pants so much because again, it was something that was hitting at my incision. So like the first 24 hours I was in the hospital gown and then once they took my catheter out and I was like going to the bathroom and you finally get to take a shower and all that stuff, that's when you kind of, I feel like, are like, okay, I feel like a new person and kind of get back to myself. The pajamas that I love the best are pretty much those nightgowns that are like the shirt gowns that come with the buttons because then it's just easy access and you can just open and then feed the baby that way. So this one is so comfy. Um, it's from Cozy Earth and it's completely bamboo. And so this is what this looks like. This does come with pants, but they're very soft and drawstring. So if you tend to be more cold, this might be something that you're looking for. But again, you just want something that's gonna open up here. So it's again, very easy access. And then also Stars Above from Target such a great brand i just size up and i got this one which is a shirt but it's short sleeves because i'm delivering in the summertime i have no idea if i'm going to be really hot or cold it just really depends and then stars above also comes with like long sleeve versions like you can see this one i like darker colors too because if you are going to leak then you don't have to worry about you know things showing. I just get like three or four of these and these are my rotation, especially while I'm at home, not only in the hospital. And the other thing for mom is no slip socks. So the grip socks, these are huge. I didn't have these the first time and I remember like my mom and obviously people were able to visit them. Like this time, I don't think anybody's able, gonna be able to come to the hospital except for my husband. I just wanna be prepared as much as I can. So these no grip socks, you want these because my feet got so cold in the in the hospital room for some reason. So no grip socks were huge. And obviously when you're going to the bathroom, like you're going to be going very slowly and you're gonna be hunchbacked and you're just like trying to get there. And when you get into the um, bathroom and everything, you just, it's just, you know, a lifesaver. These are great. So you can just get, you know, get like three or four of those. So that way you can switch them out. When you are able to go into the shower, you're gonna want your toiletries and you're gonna want your own toiletries, personally speaking. So. Couple of things. I wear makeup and even when I'm in the hospital, I'm probably gonna put a few things on just because I want to like, you know, take some pictures and whatnot. I'm gonna bring my makeup bag, but for taking off my makeup, it's gonna be very highly unlikely that I'm gonna be able to walk to the bathroom and just easily wipe everything off. So I recommend something like this, the makeup eraser. It's a cloth, it's an antibacterial cloth. All you need is water to remove the makeup. Just douse it in water. So even if you have a cup of water or something like that, and then you wipe the makeup off 
and at least then you know your skin is clean and free of any dirt and impurities. And that for me is just a big thing because I'm just like, oh, if I'm gonna put makeup on, I wanna be able to wash it off. So makeup eraser is a fantastic way. I just like this way better than makeup wipes because makeup wipes, you know, they tear at your skin. A lot of times they're made with alcohol. And obviously any of your skincare stuff, like sunscreen is still a must for me even though we're indoors. Um, some lip balm and um, a good moisturizer. I keep it very simple. Like I'm not gonna sit there and start using, you know, masks and stuff like that. But because I might be alone, this time I might take some eye patches or something like that. I don't know. But um, I haven't fully thought about that. I just keep things at a minimum. So that's like foundation, concealer, a little bit of bronzer, mascara and lip gloss. Something like this, which is like my Tristique pouch is fantastic. So like stick makeup I like, like the Bare Minerals um, Complexion Rescue Stick. Things that I can use my fingers for, I don't have to go crazy with, even like my Maybelline, um, these matte ink stays or these Super Stay ink crayons are great because you can use them for eyes, lips, and cheeks. Live Tinted has some too. There's just some really great options. Making the makeup process is just a lot more simple. And as far as the skincare goes, honestly, it's using the makeup eraser and then having like these Kinship Insta Swipe Lemon Honey AHA pads. I love because one, they just come with disposable pads like this. Um, it has like glycolic acid in it and it just kind of gets any, rid of any residual makeup and then you can just throw it away, so I love that. This is the Bliss Vitamin C and Pro Collagen Moisturizer, something that's just gonna keep me nice and hydrated. Like my lips get super chapped in the hospital. So this is the Rose Petal Soft Lip Cream from Fresh. And that's about it. I keep it pretty simple with the skincare there just because Honestly, my, your whole focus is on you and baby, and I don't see too much downtime. So just take minimal things that you might need. And then body cream, like for your feet, for your arms, that was something I loved. Um, so Lilicious has some great products that I love. This one is Peachy Keen, it's a body butter. The Glow On Body Oil from Honest Beauty. So I use this for my belly, and no matter what, like even throughout after, you still wanna put stuff on your tummy area especially when you're kind of like shrinking back to your size so you just want to keep that really hydrated so i'm definitely taking that with me travel size shampoo and conditioner washing your hair in the hospital is like being at a hotel and if you don't like the stuff that comes with it you want to have the good stuff so i like taking a shampoo and conditioner just one that you like and just make sure that that's available to you but as far as a razor and stuff goes you're not bending over and doing that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? One thing that I read a lot about that people said that they used, I never did, were um, shower sandals because, you know, just having the grip and having that ease of being able to stand up or just rely on something when you're um, taking a shower for the first time is beneficial, but I, I never use that. That's pretty much it for mom. The only other thing is a going home outfit, and if you feel comfortable going home and pajamas, you can do that. I'm probably gonna take like a sweatsuit, like one I've been wearing around a lot, like a tie-dye one that's just really comfy or a maxi dress, but I like to be super comfortable, especially when I'm leaving after surgery. And then for baby, the biggest things that you wanna have are obviously the car seat in the car, which make sure your partner takes care of that, a little like receiving blanket, and then his or her going home outfit. This is from Solly Baby, and I am in love with this brand. So this is just like comes with a little cap, so cute and then just a little outfit. So it's like the little shirt and the little pants. So you can take either a onesie or something like this, basically diapers and stuff. I will say use a hospital to your advantage and ask for more and just use and anything that's left over, take it with you because you're gonna use all those diapers, all those disposable pads. Like you'll see, especially when you have a boy, the disposable pads are huge because they tend to pee on themselves or on you. And so you constantly have to be taking those pads and um, washing them. And so like the disposable pads at the hospital that, that the hospital gave were so great because I would just use them, he'd pee on it, and then I'd throw it out and then, you know, use another one. So ask and just take home those things. Like the newborn diapers, you're going to be going through those like crazy. So, you know, just ask them to keep refilling and and use them and take extras with you home. That's basically all the baby's going to need, nothing else. I don't think you need a pump. Uh, if you need a pacifier, they will have pacifiers for you too, like the soothing ones. Um, if there's a stuffed animal you wanna bring or something like that, anything sentimental, you can do that for sure. But um, I pretty much keep that very simple. The one 
last thing that I want to mention that's really important is any paperwork that you need for the hospital, make sure you have that, especially around like your cord blood. If you are having cord blood and tissue collected, make sure you have that paperwork done because sometimes if it's not accurate or done properly, it can affect what's being collected. If you are doing like the circumcision or anything like that, like that's just talked about prior to, I'm sure this will be all stuff that you that you go over with your OB. One thing that I forgot to mention was stuff for your spouse. They do have like inflatable mattresses and stuff, especially during C-section. If your partner's gonna stay with you, it's not just for a night, it's gonna be more like three or four nights. So they wanna get comfortable. The only thing that we really brought was a pillow and blanket. Um, so a comfy pillow and comfy blanket. As far as like, you know, portable mattresses and stuff, we just didn't need them. Again, it's really bare minimums. You know, just the toiletries and uh, glasses, contact solution, toothpaste, change of clothes. And lastly, I just wanna go over something that's a little newer that I definitely didn't have access to back in 2012 and even 2014 when I had my first two children. Um, because you know, all of this stuff can be really overwhelming, packing your hospital bag and knowing what you need. So there's this company that actually reached out to me. They're a startup and I was just blown away by them. It's called It's Bodily. And it comes in a package like this. Basically, there are different packages that are already ready for moms to be, um, depending on if you're having a vaginal birth, if you're having a C-section, everything comes in here. Like there's a guidebook. I got the C-kit um, and it tells you like pregnancy recovery bundle, abdominal recovery bundle, vaginal healing bundle, bundle. It's just, it's so informative and I love how it actually goes over things that you're going to need. For instance, one of the first things, giant maxi pads. You get most must have lists on hospital bags. I don't think maxi pads are actually listed mainly because hospitals provide them, but you know, like the big giant ones are really necessary. Another thing are mesh undies, which is exactly what I was talking about. So let me break one of these out for you guys. Okay, perfect. This is amazing. This is exactly what you would get at the hospital. So these are mesh undies. One size, soft and breathable. These mesh underwear are ideal for post-birth and pregnancy recovery. Let me explain why. So they look like this. They're, they, it just looks like, you know, like a bandeau top, but they're so breathable. They're so soft and they feel like second skin, which is exactly what you want, especially when you've just had major surgery like a C-section. These are exactly what you will get in the hospital maternity pads, just like this. So this already comes there for you. Now, this might be TMI for those that have never had a baby um, and you're going to, through this the first time, but it also comes with a stool softener. One of the biggest rules is after 24 hours, um, they remove a catheter, so you actually have to get up and go to the bathroom. And before, I remember <laughs> this was something I was traumatized by, but before you actually leave the hospital, they, you have to pass a stool. It's mandatory, just so that way they know that your incision is healing properly. A stool softener is in there, but obviously that's something that most, more likely than not, if you needed it, the hospital would obviously give that to you. The insider patty. So again, it's kind of exactly what I ordered. It's actually softer to the touch, but it has a nice band that goes above your incision. So it's gonna go towards the waist and just be comfy. One thing I really liked from them, which I'm eager to try out, this is their maternity band. This is exactly something that you would want. Kind of like that maternity belt that I was talking about. Grippy socks, exactly what I talked about. Um, so again, for first time moms, I will say looking at this after going to the hospital two times, this has everything you're gonna need. The one thing that they actually put in here that I forgot about was snacks. So this has little oats in here. Now, usually if we weren't in COVID and we weren't you know, going through a pandemic, you could have visitors come and I would probably have like my sister-in-law or my brother bring me sushi. I'm a big fan of turkey sandwiches, all that kind of stuff that I would wanna stuff my face with um, that I was not able to during pregnancy. This time, especially because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to have visitors. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to have outside food, what, whatever it is. So I, I'm gonna bring snacks. And one of the biggest things that I wanted was like, candy i still had a big sweet tooth post birth so um like chocolate for some reason was like one of my biggest things so anything that you think like dry snacks that you think you're gonna want um 
just pack a little bit of those because it doesn't hurt to have. Basically, this is all customized for you in here. So I'm gonna leave a link down below with a discount code. There are various boxes that you can choose from and it's just a really easy way to kind of have it done for you rather than curate your own bag. I hope that this wasn't too overwhelming. I think I kind of went through basically everything that mom's gonna need and then the few things that baby needs. And baby needs such minimal things. Like let's say you wait till the last minute to pack your bag. Even if you yourself forget a lot of stuff, you're still gonna be okay. The hospital will have everything and anything you need. If you needed to be in a hospital gown the whole time, it would be fine. But obviously things to make you a little bit more comfortable is always going to be beneficial if you guys have any questions for me do not hesitate to let me know in the comments below this is such an overwhelming time it's an overwhelming exercise i know on instagram i've been getting so many dms from people um especially first time moms on like what i'm packing and what my newborn essentials are i am definitely going to be making another video on my newborn essentials really want to see what i actually end up using because I do feel like I'm going through this again for the first time. And I'm gonna list and link everything that I talked about down below. So that's about it. I hope you guys found this video useful. Again, any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye.